talking about putting wings on butterflies, I'm hoping that what we're going to talk about this afternoon is how to not just put the wings on the butterflies. Have some photo boards over here uh, so that you can see a full range of the photos that I'm going to show you this afternoon. And the photos that I'm going to show you are about an international video conference on climate change, which was arranged to coincide with the United Nations Conference on Climate Change. This is a student conference that's arranged to fit in with the United Nations Conference. And the students taking part are students from Pūtareri um, in the Eastern Bay and from Apotiki College. And so I'll be showing you pictures of those. And we worked with the Centre for Global Education in Canada. And the director there is Terry Godwalt, who's a good friend of mine. And he's been away on holiday. I sent him a message and I said, I'd really love for you to say something to um, the wonderful Gisborne area um, because they're doing this fantastic um, tech expo. And he was away on holiday, and so he actually didn't get the message for a while, and then when he got it, he had to hurry. But he very, very quickly, early this morning, made a quick video, put it on YouTube, and then I downloaded it when I got here for you. And really, this is testament to everything that we've been hearing this morning about social media and how quickly we can communicate with people and the sorts of things that we can do. So even though he was hiking somewhere up in the mountains, um, he managed to say hello to you this morning. So I'm actually going to go to that, hopefully. Um, that's not very helpful. we can get the sound. I might just leave it small. Hello New Zealand and hello Liz. Hello. My name is Terry Goddard and I'm with the oh, Center for Global Education not there. in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And it is my... Get it. Thank you. Just drag it off the edge. Yeah. Ah, that's so good. Fantastic. This is great. And this is the other thing about cooperation. When we were trying to actually get all of these different things to play this morning, there were four of us, weren't there? There were four of us doing this. That's fantastic cooperation. Testament to the day. Okay, here we go. Hello, New Zealand, and hello, Liz. My name is Terry Goddard. Thank you. 
So that's Terry. And here we go back again. Success. Great. Okay. So, so Terry's work takes him to lots of different countries, apart from just working in Canada. And in those countries, he helps other people set up video conferencing facilities. With New Zealand, we only work remotely. I've never actually met Terry, but I feel as if I know him really well because we've worked together many times. As I was saying, the, this particular student video conference is set up at the same time as the United Nations conference. So it means that students are able to take part in all of the things that the United Nations is doing and also use all of the resources and, and look at all of the readings, listen to all of the speakers, um, and then have their own video conference themselves. So here's Terry. Um, he's a very charismatic sort of chap. He's really good at pulling together large groups of people across the world. Um, very enthusiastic. Uh, you can see it's really just quite small video conferencing gear that we're using. And we didn't have any video conferencing gear, so we had to actually beg the district council um, to borrow their gear. And so um, the year before, we actually video conferenced from the mayor's office. And, um, and this year, we used the big... Um, district council meeting room. Um, but we still only had small gear, but just as effective. It's not one of those great big screens, but it's, it's just, as, just as effective. As we, as we move on from this, what I want to do is actually show you in some pictures what the students in Opotiki were seeing on the screen. Um, there's a whole raft of pictures there, so you can follow the whole story if you want to have a look at that. Um, but the students in Alaska, Canada, Borneo, Guatemala, um, Australia were looking at exquisite photos of New Zealand, our beautiful, beautiful country. They were looking at beautiful rivers and streams and mountains. They were seeing where we live and what, and what we do. At the same time as they were seeing these stunning images of ours, this is what our people were seeing on the screen from there. One of the things that we were looking at and, and that we were about to discuss was the effect of deforestation and the effect on people's lives, on people's economies, and on the um, wildlife species of the area, and the flow-on effect to the rest of the globe. And it became obviously obvious really quickly that the things that were being talked about there in terms of pollution, in terms of loss of resources, in terms of economy, in terms of climate change, were going to affect us all. And even though we had our beautiful photos of New Zealand, we were just as involved as they were. We saw photos of people coming out of the fires after the after the fires had gone through the, um, the plantations, the palm oil plantations, they were being burnt off. We saw people moving out of the area. We saw the incredible sadness of people who were working in these areas and who were seeing these sorts of things firsthand. And at this stage, we saw, I'm really having trouble with my glasses today. It's this. We saw, you can just stop, from, no, I'm, I'm just joking. Oh, I can't get it out of there. Good job you're not an audience of a thousand. Okay, I'll just stick them on. Okay, at this stage, when we were looking at these photos, some of the things that were really, really important to us were things like the fact that up to 100 plant and animal species were disappearing every day, that 10 rugby fields of bush and land were disappearing every hour, that we had a worldwide um, clean water crisis, and that Australia's recent drought had been linked to an increase in deforestation, and that New Zealand was home to over 1 million species, and many of those were endangered and we're found nowhere else in the world. So these were the questions, these were the questions to be um, discussed. Very powerful experience for people to realize that we were in this boat together. 
we talked about the fact that as these um, great tracts of land were ravaged and burnt off, that we were seeing the effects of this in terms of the orangutans. We saw the orangutans fleeing from the forest. We saw dead orangutans. One of the things that we saw were babies that had been left behind. We could see firsthand and hear from the people who were there firsthand what the effects of deforestation was. And as we talked, these were the background images that we were looking at. It was reminding us that this was a very important issue and something really important to discuss. And we realised that there were lots of things that we had in common with the people there as well. They talked about the fact that 25% of the habitat, in terms of the habitat that was being um, destroyed, contained 25% of all of the medicinal plants that we need, that, that, that medicines are derived from. And we looked at the fact that as we get rid of our forests and we get rid of our ecosystems, we get rid of the possibility sometimes that we may find a cure for cancer. We get rid of the possibility that we might find a new drug from natural plants. These were all really important things. And as we thought about that, we thought about our own Māori remedies and we thought about our own traditional practices. And we could see that what they were talking about is what we're talking about too and what is happening to us every day. And we realised why that was really, really important and why it was important to continue to have these global conversations. We talked about the fact that even though we had forest problems and weed problems in, 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 in places overseas, we have got um, the lake weed problem here in New Zealand, we've got Didimo in the South Island, we've got exactly the same problems, we need to talk about it. We need to not be the person who's showing these photos to somebody else. We need to be the people who are talking about it at this stage. Again, we realised why global conversations were so incredibly important and why we need to take part in them. We saw that some of the tiniest species were the first to become extinct and some of the most precious. And some of these species have got long tales to tell in terms of helping us under, understand our evolution and the ways in which we can move forward. Oh, I was supposed to have that one up here. Sorry, that's our little tiny species. And you can see that the video conferencing gear there, we're, like we are small time in terms of what we're using. All these other people had walls of video conferencing and tiered seats and all sorts of wonderful things. And here we are sitting in the district council office with our tiny little video conferencing gear, but it was just as good. There's Terry again. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the engagement and the effect that, the, um, that this particular day had on people. It, just in terms of, of actually really, really understanding, really becoming engaged and really becoming empowered to do something. This morning, um, Mike was talking about how when we video conference, it's a very powerful way to be able to communicate with people because when we only talk on the phone or Skype with no picture or anything like that, we lose 65% of the message because what he was saying is that 65% of the message is in the eye contact. And he was talking about some person that he used to talk to who would just lose interest straight away and start looking at his phone and looking away and all the rest of it. And he's saying if he was actually doing that just on the phone, he wouldn't know that they'd lost interest. He wouldn't know that they weren't paying any attention to him. But when we video conference, we get the full impact. We get that extra 65%. And so I'd like to show you the full impact. And we don't usually feel like this when we read it in a book. We don't usually feel like this when somebody just stands up and tells you about something or gives you a lecture. Or sometimes even when you just watch it on TV, 
But here what we've got is we've got it happening, we've got the pictures and we've got the people talking about it. So we have full impact. And so I'd kind of go, okay, well, when you watch a video, you know how you can cry or you can feel really emotional or whatever because you're in the moment. But somehow video conferencing where you actually use the video or the picture and the person and the collaborative situation is somehow 150%. You know, I don't know about that. But it's it's more powerful. It's more powerful. On the day, there were the junior students from Kutareri and the senior students from Apotiki College and our Kamatua were there too. And you can see how impacted Koro Sol is by what he's listening to and what he's seeing. And we could actually move forward and that there were things that we can do. And people are talking about the things that they're doing and there are things that we can do too. And so, this is no ordinary video conference. We're not sitting there in stuffy little chairs staring at a little screen. We are doing the haka to the world. And so people in Alaska, Canada, Borneo, Guatemala, Australia are seeing Apotiki people doing the haka. And this is something that had such an impact on them, they have never ever stopped mentioning it. Sometimes I pop into some of their lectures um, at the university there, and people always ask me about this. They say, can you do the haka? Well, no, <laughs> but they, they, this is a story that has gone on, which has been really lovely. It was very impactful for them. Very special, very powerful learning experience for them. Then the, um, the little ones um, sang a waiata, and the waiata was a very special one because the community and the school developed this waiata specially for this occasion, and it was about being kaitiaki of our own environment. And so it was a very, very special one, very important for the whole notion of, of climate change. Then after that, um, Koro sat down at the front and he just had it handwritten on a little piece of paper and he spoke to all these different countries about us writing the waiata and he, because um, it had been sung in Māori first, then he translated it into English and he told everybody what it said and about how, how the land was important to us and how we were part of the environment. And so he went through the whole, um, the whole wording and there was just, you could have heard a pin drop, it was just amazing. Um, and that was a really nice involvement for, um, for the community as well. And that's the last slide that I'm going to show you today. And that really um, encapsulates what I think is the most important thing that I take from this. And that is there was just this incredible feeling of well-being right throughout the community. The little ones, the, uh, the college, the community, our kamatua, everybody felt that we were globally connected, that we were empowered to do something and that we were doing it with other people and that we were a collective and we were communicating together and that there was hope and that we were going to do something magic. And the magic thing that they did, I haven't got all these up there, the magic thing that they did over here, if you had a chance to see on the way out, is that they worked with a group of scientists to start a research project around the Ohiwa Harbour um, and they worked with the water quality, the forest, the stream. Um, they discovered a new species of crab. They analysed it all using um, video. They used iPads, videoed people's um, voice as they went. And at the end, they're, they're doing a current affairs programme where they're actually interviewing other students as experts um, to ask them about Ohiwa Harbour and what they've done. Nice full circle. Last board there is about reading grannies. Some of them didn't have a high level of literacy. So we used a program where we used online reading grannies, but like um, Sagatra Mitra's um, experiment in India, um, the students got feedback from the online grannies once a week. Score, reading scores, choo, right, right out of the sky. So lovely little circle, coming back, lots of stories to tell back in a video conference. Um, could talk about it all day, but only got 18 minutes. So um, that's pretty much the story, and I couldn't 
recommend more highly global conversations. So that's me, and if there's anything you'd like to ask, we're all happy to answer any questions. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's the first time. Yeah. So it was... <laughs> but they got into it very quickly. It was very easy to do. And the, the skill of the facilitator, I think, is key there, because Terry's very good at doing that. Yeah. What was the, um, the platform that um, They were using... Um, is it Tanberg? I, I am not the technical um, genius on this. No, 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 this is proper um, high definition video um, equipment, um, it, which, which was great. It was fantastic to be able to do that. If we use Skype, then we can't get the multi dimensions on the screen, but it's only a matter of time, I guess, before, and I'm already investigating other platforms where we can actually do something a little bit better than Skype. And we did hear in the last session, not sure if anyone was here, um, Anthony Royal was talking about something that you could buy now that was $260 that you could attach to your TV. Anyone hear that? Anyway, I'm going to follow that one up because he said it's fabulous. Um, yeah, so that will be interesting too. Yeah. Yes. Fabulous. Do you think that might be good for this? Yeah. And have you found the quality good? Great. That's really good to hear because when it first came out, we did actually try it a few times and um, it seemed to be a little unstable. And so um, it's good to hear that you have good experiences. And what would be your maximum number of people? Um, so that you can have a maximum of 10 people in the, hang in the hangout at one time and all 10 accounts or people. Great. Thank you. Yes. That's good. That's good to know that it's good working well with quality. That's great. Thank you. Is that me? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.